Crack. Crack. You missed the original crack. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, brother. We, we, Levi messed up and he wasn't recording the original podcast. We had a really cool opening, everyone, but. So what he was saying is that we were originally going to get, um, you know, some old Aggie. And for some reason, a, a liquor store in Fort Collins did not have it. Yeah, you would think the place where it originated would have the beer. But, yeah, we, we settled for two of our favorite beers. And you said, what, what is your, is Fat Tire your favorite beer? Yeah, it's the camera right there, Fat Tire. It's up there, definitely top five. <sighs> My guy's trying to get a Maybe sponsorship right now. I know, New Belgium shout out. Um, if you want if you want to sponsor Zach, if you want to sponsor <laughs> us, you can best believe that we're going to be having one of these tall cans at every single uh Every single podcast. So yeah, hit yeah, us up. I like it. For the podcast. But is that is that your favorite beer? Uh definitely up there. Probably top five, maybe top three even. Um recently I just got big into Hefefeisens. Oh uh, yeah, you're talking if about that's that. how you uh, if that's how you say it. It's like a, a from what from what I know. Is it, it German? It's is a it? German style wheat ale. You gotta and say it, it like it's German, like Hefe <laughs> Like you know? <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to do that. <laughs> but it, it is some good stuff. It's kinda like um like a thicker, more flavorful wheat beer. I don't. I don't really know how to describe it. You just gotta drink it. I Is it only in South it, Carolina? No, no, no. Try no. pulling the, hmm. the the mic a little closer to you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Me and uh, Zach are headed to a wedding right now for Trent Sieg. Oh jeez. Trent, you're gonna be watching this. Congratulations. Yeah. Shout out to Trent and Carly. Yeah. I don't know whether they'll the look, at you or look at this camera. Don't look at the camera. Yeah. Don't look at the camera at all. It's just me and you. Or maybe we talking. should kind of. I would just face it. Yeah, I mean the people. Like semi, semi, the people are yeah. in the convo too. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, but Trent, Trent and Carly, congrats to you guys getting married. Uh, sanctity of marriage. It's a beautiful thing. Wouldn't you say so, Zach? That's what they say in the beginning. In the beginning. I mean, I don't know. It's either it's really good or it's really bad, or not. Want to say really bad, but you know, people have mixed and mixed. Uh, feelings about it sometimes i feel like yeah i i mean my parents would always say like i mean i know they were kind of joking but they'd be like don't ever get married yeah don't ever have kids and it's just like (laughs) what do i what what is in store for me when i grow up i just don't get how people they say that so often and then people still do it yeah it's like if it was if it was really that bad people wouldn't do it but yeah then why would you do why would people do be doing it so maybe it's really not that bad but you know it's like an exaggeration of you know, when it's bad, it's bad. When it's good, it's good. Yeah. I mean, what other alternative do you have? Like, be alone for the rest of your life? Like, do you know, do you, and it, this is, like, really interesting that I find. Do you know anybody who's just, like, boyfriend and girlfriend that are, like, 60 or 70? There's, like, nobody I know. No. Like, like and, and at that, that point, I mean, I feel like there's, at that age, there's people who have widows and stuff, and then they date yeah. again, which is okay, but, like. You never meet somebody who's like 60 or 70 who has like, oh, I've been with her for 40 years now. Right. And just never got married. Yeah. I I don't think I've met anybody. I don't know anybody like that. Yeah. I mean, I know there's definitely people who go and they're just single their entire life. You know? That's true. I know very few of those people too. Yeah. It's kind of sad though. I don't know. I I don't know. You don't. I mean, you can live the only life, the life you want to live. So if you want that type of life. Yeah. Who are we to say something about it? I mean. I guess that brings up the question, is there somebody out there for everybody? You know? It's like they always say there's somebody out there for you. Yeah, you I mean, people them. say that, but there is somebody. Okay, so there is somebody out there for everyone. I think that's true, but will you find that person? Mm, they could be on the other side of the world. That is true. And then you'll just never find them. It's, never it's, not, like, it's not even up to you at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that is... A really interesting outlook on it, but I think that people will find their way back to each other. I guess you could say, yeah, you know. But yeah, how do we get on? How do we get on this topic? We we're talking about Trent and Carly. Yeah, Trent and Carly. Yeah, now that yeah. now Trent is trapped forever. Now Trent is trapped forever, but he chose that life. Yeah. See, the thing is, he the one had to propose to her, right? She wasn't proposing to him. Mm. So I mean, if there were a girl to propose to the guy, and the rules would be changed. I mean, no, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. That's kind of taking the initiative, I guess, sometimes. I mean, it's like if you... I feel like a lot of times the women pressure the men, you know, into proposing. Yeah. So it's like, hey, if you want it to get done, 
I would. I wouldn't mind if you asked me. I like how you keep putting the beer <laughs> on there, and putting the fat tire logo. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? It's not even logo side out. Oh, okay. I thought you had the fat tire logo. No, because this is. Yeah, I'm going for easy access right here. Yeah, I know. I know a lesbian couple out there mm. that uh, they've been together for a long time and they love each other, but they're not getting married like for tax reasons. Right. For example, so they're like cheating the system in a way. They're like, oh, we don't care about getting married. Like, why? Why not save some money to yeah. while we're at it? Right. Well, shoot, mine as well. I know people, I think my parents got married because of tax reasons or... They not, did? They, not, no, not tax, but maybe like insurance. And it seemed like that was kind of like a common thing back in the day. It could be a common thing today. I don't know. Where, insurance where, is expensive. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not at that point in my life where like I've looked into all that, but I know it comes into play yeah. later down the road. It's like you almost like, you, I mean, you have to have it. You have to. It's like a burden. Yeah. <laughs> How old, where, where are your parents from? They're, so they were born in California. My whole family's from California, and then they moved to Colorado for whatever reasons. And then I was the first one in my family born in Colorado. And then I have a younger brother who was born in Colorado shortly after me. And then two of my mom's sisters came out to Colorado. So now we have, like, you know, just those three girls, um, their families, and then the rest is in California. The rest is in California. Yeah, Southern California. Do you ever, like, think about how your life would have went if you would have stayed in California? Grew, grew up in California? I don't know. I mean, it you, probably would have been different because I mean, it's a that's a wild place out there. There's so many people. It's so expensive. Yeah. It probably would have been a lot of fun though. There's a lot of stuff to do out there. But just you as a person would probably be a lot different, right? Probably. I, I mean, just growing up probably with more family. Yeah. Um, would probably play a big, big part of it. You know, because I didn't have much family out here growing up. Oh, you didn't. So like, oh, I mean, it's also like my mom and I had my my two aunts, but only one of my aunts and has kids. So oh, it was pretty great. small most of the time. So you don't have much cousins <clears throat> or anything? Yeah, I do, but they're out in California. So, like, for, like, holidays, we would never go out to California. That's, like, a big mission yeah. at that point. So too. we never had, like, big family get-togethers. So right. it's, like, we just had our deal in Colorado. Or maybe I would just go out there to California. Or my mom would go out to California. Or, you know, maybe not too many people from California end up coming to Colorado. Yeah, it's just not as easy, but, like, when you have family parties, like, Hey, come on over for Christmas. Yeah, you know, no I, I gotta, what do I gotta do? Buy plane tickets. Yeah, you know, travel like two states over. Like, yeah. it's not as easy. That stuff's expensive. Yeah, it just adds up after a while. You know, it really does. And like at that same point, I I think it's really interesting how because like for me, my my dad and my mom's side are a lot different. My mom's side is like my Hispanic side. I'm half mm-hmm. Hispanic, half white. Right. She her side is this like I have probably 20 to 30 cousins and Mm -hmm. it's just like i guess for some reason hispanics have big families Mm -hmm. whatever that is maybe why and my dad's side i have like two cousins (laughs) it's kind of like that my dad's side we don't really have too much because so my so my dad's dad was he was like the youngest of his siblings by far like there was a big gap um and so a lot of his or i guess it would have been I don't know, a lot of his siblings, you know, died, and they're all like, East Coast, and so it was basically just, like, my mom's side okay. the whole time, which is cool. Um, I don't know, because, I mean, it, it, it's that's just, all, like, all I know, you know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't really know. Uh, you know, I got two sets of grandparents because my mom's parents split, so, oh, you know, shit. not just, like, having, like, one set of grandparents, you know, I got two, yeah. so it's almost like I have, you know, like, my mom's side and my dad's side, but... I've never heard of a situation like that before. Were your parents parents like, split? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that seems like it would be pretty normal, but for some reason, I, yeah, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it seems like. <laughs> so you have like a, you have like a step. So that means one of those sets of grandparents weren't even blood. And, yeah. But, so I got like you know a step grandfather and a step grandmother. Oh. But you know they they've been together as long as I can remember. You know, so it's yeah. like they're basically blood to me. Um, but it was nice having two sets of grandparents. That is pretty cool. You know, lots of kids. That seems, that's what it seems like a lot of my family is a lot of like, you know, uh, marriages and divorces and bringing in with other kids. And it's when I try to explain it to people, it's it's very confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it works though, and I'll, it's not like a massive family. So yeah, it's just like nor like a normal amount of family. I'd say so. How is how was it growing up? Like, what part of Colorado did you grow up in? So I grew up in Aurora, Colorado, which is Aurora. for those who are not familiar with like Colorado and like the Denver area it's like right east of Denver yeah um and you know I'm like way out east in Denver almost like on the borderline of 
of you know civilization in Kansas, you know. <laughs> um, so that that's where I grew up, and it's I mean it's a, it's a really big city. I think it's the third largest in Colorado, right outside you know Denver, obviously, and Colorado Springs has us by a couple, yeah, uh, several hundred thousand. So yeah, so I mean, growing up there, what was that experience like for you? As far as like what qualities do you think you brought with you to make you who you are today as a person? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, I think Aurora's it's a big like working city, you know. Um, you know, people it's just really blue collared, um, you know, just working, you know, but it's it's a good it's a good city because it's so it's so big and it's diverse and it has, you know, it's good spots, it's bad spots, but somehow they come together and create, you know, like a, a functioning city. Yeah. Um I think what was interesting was where I lived was more like urban, suburban type, you know. Uh, neighborhood and then I went to school and like I want to say like the inner city but um, I went to a school where most people didn't want to go to school why just because they heard bad things about it like you know, gateway people, right yeah gateway high school well, bro you put on for gateway I, put on, like, I don't know, even I know it. anything about yeah. gateway but just you always like gateway yeah you know <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah I mean I guess I had a bad reputation I remember my mom was like hey I'm, I'm never gonna send you to this school because it just had a bad reputation for you know, the kids that went there and Uh, it wasn't like the best school to go to, um, you know, but we moved houses and I ended up being in that district to go to that school. And, um, it was either I walked down to the bottom of my street to catch the bus or find my ways two miles to another school. Right. So I just, I picked, you know, walking down the street and I had known, um, you know, somebody who went there and said it wasn't as bad. And then I, I was just thinking, I figured, uh, I figure that no matter where you go, you're going to find groups of people that, you know, either are a bad influence or a good influence, but it's who you decide to spend your time with yeah. that will ultimately make up your experience. And so I was like, if I go to Gateway and I hang out with the troublemakers, I'm going to get in trouble. But if I go to Gateway and I don't hang out with the troublemakers, then I'm not going to get in trouble. Did you, you know? did you have that mindset going in to like before you got there? Yeah. I, well, because when I was little, my mom always used to say, um, you choose your friends and don't let your friends choose you. Yeah. You know, so like if, if, uh, you know, someone's doing something that, you know, you really don't think is good, you have the power to say, Hey, you know, I don't really want to be friends with you. Um, or I don't want to hang out with you because you're doing stuff that's not benefiting me and getting me to where I want to go. And so, you know, I figured you'd find that at every school. So I mean, I mean, what would be the difference between going to gateway or going to, you know, any other school in the Aurora public? That's true. There's going to be bad, bad eggs at any school you go exactly. to. Yeah, that yeah. is true. That's a good way to look at it. I never yeah. thought about it like that because that's a really big perception that people have on like where they send their kids to school at mm-hmm. is the, that school's reputation. But yeah. like you said, I mean, you're the one that makes that choice about I, who you want to hang yeah. out with. I mean, the school factor, like the educational aspect, I don't really know too much about. I mean, I know, I mean, there's, there's definitely a difference between, you know, high academic schools and like yeah. lower academic schools. Um, I'm not, I know Gateway's not at the top academic, you know, in yeah. Colorado, but I mean, I don't think it's the worst. And then again, it's, it's what you make of it. You right. know, are you going to take the time to, cause I mean, it's the same material, you know, it's, it's what you do with it. Yeah. We might not have a, a touchscreen 50 inch TV <laughs> or whatever, you know, yeah. but we're, we're going to get the work done. Yeah. You know? Times, then, times were a lot different back then too, yeah. dude, with like technology that a lot of schools have now, like. I mean, they don't, they don't have the greatest funding still, but schools that weren't as nice before are coming out with, like, really good technology, yeah. too. It's crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, I went there, and it was a great experience, and, um, you know, I, I didn't know what I didn't know, so, I mean, going to Gateway was all I knew, so I didn't know, like, what was over at Regis or Cherokee Trail or Rangeview or, you yeah. know, Central, some of these other schools that, you know, I, I could have gone to. You didn't know what you were um, missing out on, basically. Yeah, so. exactly. Right. So it was cool, though. That's awesome. Did you, uh, like, before you went to Gateway, did you want to go to any other school? No, I don't really know. I mean, their, our rival school, Ranger, was, like, two miles from my house, and the head coach lived down the street. Uh, so he kind of assumed that I was going to that school, I think, you know, just because I was right there, and um, I literally passed that school every single day on the way to Gateway. Damn. Um, but it was just it was easier to go to Gateway because I can catch the bus and go there. Right. Um, and I liked the head coach there. He came into my middle school and kind of, you know, t- told us about the program. And I was like, well, this is where I'm supposed to go. So this is going to be great. 
Yeah. Um, did you did you still do yourself close ties with him? Yeah, I was that? just out there last week, and he he lives in South Carolina now. Um, he's doing great out there. Went out there and visited him, and uh, you know helped him out with their practices. Oh, that's um, cool. Kind of shown a little things that I've learned, um, you know, along my journey. So. Yeah. It was a lot. Of, it's hot out there. It's humid. Is it? Yeah. It's the south. That humidity mm-hmm. is no joke. Yeah. It's way different. <laughs> yeah. That, that like, aspect of coaches, I think, is really important. Like, coaches have such a big influence on, like, kids' lives, especially at, like, a younger age. Mm-hmm. Like, I think a lot of, like, the way I grew up, as far as, like, the coaches that I have shaped, shaped me to, like, how I played throughout the rest of my career. Right. Especially, like, when I was young. Right. But... Yeah, a lot of times, like, I think it could be dangerous for coaches who don't realize that. They don't, sometimes they don't realize the influence they have over kids, mm-hmm. especially at a younger age. Like, when did you start playing football? I started when I was nine. When you were nine? Yeah. Like, do you remember when you were, like, that young, like, any, like, lasting impact that a coach had on you? Not too early, but I remember my last year of youth football was in my, was my seventh grade year, and I remember, um, I just remember because I was a little bit older, but also we went undefeated and won the you know the city championship. We were the real deal. Mm-hmm. And those coaches, I'll still talk to them today. I mean, not so much on a consistent basis, but um, you know through social media. And uh, I think you know two of them came up to a game before. Okay. Um, and it's kind of cool just to keep that common connection because they were there when I was a kid. And it's like, who would have known where I'd be today? Yeah, you know. Um, if it wasn't for something they had done or, you know, the sense of being a winner and winning a championship or uh, just kind of like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's kind of like beyond words. Yeah. What, it, how, how, how do you keep such a like straight forward mindset as far as this like, cause obviously where you're at now and to get to where you're at, there's, there was a lot of temptations like everywhere left and right, whether it's, like you you said hanging out with the wrong people um partying uh name it like any other temptation in your life like how do you how what is your mindset like to have like your blinders on and have tunnel vision to stay away from that well i think it first started you know with the you know you choose your friends don't let your friends choose you so your mom had a big impact on that yeah especially that saying i I keep that with me all the time and i kind of take that wherever i go and apply it to everything um, cause that, I mean, at, at that in its simplest form is saying you control you and you can make your own decisions. And so taking know, ownership then, right? Basically. So like when it comes to like temptations, you know, it's like, um, is this going to benefit me or is this going to hurt me? You know, where am I trying to go? Um, and is this really going to help me? You know, like partying and so so, mm-hmm. you know, am I going to be up till 2 a.m.? if I know I have an eight o'clock lift the next morning yeah. or a six o'clock lift, you know, am I going to be too tired to, to do that lift? Am I not going to be able to perform at my best that day um, to help me? So I think stuff like that, just like on a, I, just kind of living on a day to day basis, you know, yeah. is what I do today going to help me tomorrow? You know, like I'm going to have this beer because, you know, it's a weekend and, you know, I don't have serious training until Monday. Yeah. Again, you know, I mean, I do like my weekend stuff, um, you know, but this one beer really isn't going to, it's not going to affect Monday. Yeah. You know, it's not going to really affect tomorrow. I see what you're um, You know, and I got to crack a cold one with my guy, Ooh, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> no, I, I feel that. But you having that type of mindset is like super matured, even like from a young age. And like, it's probably a big indicator of like why you're, you're where you're at right now. Right. Right. Like a lot of people develop that sometimes later down the road but it takes like a lot of mistakes and trial and error to be able to come up with that right. type of mentality and you know walk the straight path that you're walking yeah. you know it's interesting you say that it kind of takes a long time you have to like mature a little bit yeah and i think that mostly is because i i don't know if i was just i was the only one that did it um you know but when people when older people came in you know like college football players which wasn't very often, but whenever they did come in and I was able to, you know, you know, talk to them or listen to them speak, I really listened to what they were saying. And when they were saying, you know, you don't need to party, you don't need to be, you know, getting blacked out on the weekends. You, you know, you need to, you know, pay attention in school and, 
you know, all these different, you know, do this, do this, you know, kind of stay away from this. I really listened to that. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, if they're not doing it, you know, I don't need to be doing it either. Yeah. You know, and I think just to, you know, just keep, you know, just listening to that and, uh, and then applying it. So not just hearing it and then be like, ah, I can, I can get away with that. Yeah. You know, it's like, who knows? I could have been that guy in college that went out every single weekend and got blacked out and still balled out, you know, the yeah. next week or whatever. It's going to come know? catch up to you at some point. Yeah. You know, there's guys like that who can get away with stuff like that, but you know, I didn't want to test the waters to see if I was that guy that could get away with some of that stuff. Like, eat, you know, eating bad throughout the week and then trying to perform well on game day. You know, yeah. I was like, I'm not that guy that I can't do that, you yeah. know? And so I just like kind of regulated myself like that. Yeah. How much do you eat a day? I try, Probably. I try to eat maybe like five to six times a day, five you to know, six like times. three, like three big meals. And then like, you know, two smaller meals if I can, but that it's tough, you know, cause, cause to eat healthy, it's especially when you don't have like a kitchen available at all times. And you yeah. know, it's like, I'm really not at home, like during the middle of the day, um, or a majority of the day. So, I mean, it's like, I can't go over to, you know, it's like, there's only so much you can do when you're eating out to get those calories. Yeah. In. And to get healthy food. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I've been eating Chipotle. Chipotle's healthy, right? Man. I mean, it's fresh. <laughs> it's not fried. <clears throat> I think you know, it's pretty it's, healthy. I mean, I get a good portion whenever I go. I know exactly how much I'm going to spend. You know, what's so your I, what's your Chipotle bowl look like? Uh, we went to Chipotle. Remember, we we took Kevin Nutt, <laughs> and we were like, "Listen, this is how you make a bowl. Dude, this is what you put on it." I remember that he had not been to Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Shame was on shame on you, Kevin. Yeah, shame Kevin. On you. I hope you've been back since. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but my usual bowl is brown rice, black beans. You know, and I always walk up, and I always go. <laughs> I was like, can I get a big scoop of chicken? <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I want a big scoop. And some, and some people, they look at me and they're like, this is a big guy. I he get you. chicken. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, let me kind of scrape it against the side and dump it in. You know, I'm not going to go here and then shimmy it a little bit. Yeah. Dump it in. Um, well, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. There's two people. There's two different types of servers. So when I say, can I get a big scoop of chicken, please? They'll either look at me like, yeah, dude, I got you. Like, we're, you know, we're right here. You can here. tell. You don't even say anything. It's like, it's yeah. a, it's a mutual like connection. It's yeah. like, yeah. Fuck or they're you. just like, some extra chicken. Or they're just like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to give you a small <laughs> scoop of chicken. Cause you asked. Yeah. I swear. I just have people look at me. They're just like, or they'll be like, like, oh, to this one. Um, you can get a double scoop of chicken. It's extra. <laughs> dude, it kills me. Dude. Cause all right, I need to I need to move on. So I get the I get the rice, the black beans, you know, the chicken, and then I'll do like the corn, um, the red sauce, and then you know uh, a pinch of cheese, a little bit of sour cream, and guac. Side tortilla. Okay. Side tortilla is the move. Yeah, I have to get the side tortilla, yeah, exactly. and then you like break it up. Here's the thing, too. Here's a secret. Take notes. If you get a burrito, let's say you're really hungry, you get a burrito. So check this out. I worked at Chipotle. Did you know that? I did. Yeah, I yeah, worked yeah. at Chipotle for a couple of years. I was in junior college. Just working there as a worker, you want to make your job as easy as possible. Like, <laughs> rolling those burritos is an art, right? first off. So if you have too much food in there, it's obviously it makes it harder to roll the burrito. Yeah. And oftentimes, it breaks open. And then you have to stop everything you're doing and say, hey, make me another tortilla. And then right. it pauses everything up. So... The average worker knowing that if you get a burrito is going to put less portions in that burrito than they're going to put in the bowl right. because they don't want to deal with that whole ordeal making the burrito, right? Yeah. So if you want to really like get your money's worth at Chipotle, you got to get a bowl with a tortilla on the side. Yes. Then you can make your own burrito, roll it up, and you still have extra. There's times when I... When, I'm really gonna get, let you in on some secrets here. Yeah, let me in. When I, I want to know all the secrets. What what I what I do? This is kind of like cringy at this point in my life. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this anymore. I don't really do it that much, but I just definitely did it back in like college. I would get a bowl, get double everything, like literally okay. double everything. Get two tortillas on the side, and then you literally just make two burritos for the price of one. Like I've heard it. about that. Yeah, I'm about to start doing that <laughs> this next week. I promise you on everything. <laughs> you don't even need to do that though. I've also heard, because I looked on YouTube about this to see the best way to, you know, get the most out of Chipotle. Someone's, Wait, there's videos on YouTube? Dude, the most out of Chipotle. you'd be surprised. There's multiple. 
Okay. So this this one chick was saying you could get your rice on the side in a completely separate bowl and just get like triple scoops of everything. Triple scoops of everything. Basically, because like, you can get as much as you want for the sides. Yeah. But you can do you like can. you can do like four or five scoops of rice in a separate bowl and then put all your other stuff in another. I haven't done that. They but, the thing is the workers know too that you're going to be cheating the system. Oh, absolutely. But they're honestly it's like you have to they have to honor it. So if they give you shit, you just gotta be like, listen. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to Chipotle to get a generous meal. <laughs> so load me up. So when I say, can I please get a big scoop of chicken? I'm asking for extra chicken, but I don't want to pay for extra chicken. <laughs> no. Nope. You know, it's like just. I'm the biggest dude in this line by like a foot and a half. You know, a little, sh- you know, scoop shimmy, sh- you know, yeah. scoop of chicken is really not going to cut it. It's not. But in more, it, it has a, I'm sure it has a good success rate, right? I'm sure more times than not, you get the extra chicken that you want. I think it's like 50-50. Oh, really? It started when I was in Arizona. And it's like, if I come across a young worker, well, here's, yeah. it's like they kind of <laughs> get it. You're going to you take know? advantage of the exactly. young <laughs> Yeah. It's like I went to Chipotle up here um, yesterday. And I was like, you know, I want, you know, can I get two scoops of rice, two scoops of beans? And I had to ask for a third scoop of rice because the chick just put on like a small A little, scoop. she kept putting a little bit on. Dude, I could go on all day about the <laughs> Chipotle stuff because I've been there so much. But, you know, shout out, shout out to Chipotle. They're reliable for me. Well, maybe. You know, they've been working. Maybe this is, we'll end it on this for Chipotle. Maybe this is the key. Like you find that worker that gives you that extra scoop of chicken That's what and you saying. keep going back to that worker yeah. because you guys have that connection. That, then you don't fuck with yeah. any other Chipotle worker. You ask him his schedule every single <laughs> week. You say, when are you going to be here this week? This week, And you come specifically for that Chipotle worker. I'm trying to find that worker who's getting off at about six, right? Right, right about six. For first dinner. So it works out with your schedule. Yeah, so I'm the, I'm the last bowl that they make. And they don't care how much they throw my bowl because they're about to clock Dude, out. Dude, that is another That's what key. I'm looking for. When you come in late, here's another insider working at Chipotle. <laughs> the, there's cooks that make the meat. If they have excess meat left over, they get in trouble. They get written up really? because the meat is expensive. If they make too much meat, they donate all the meat after. Mm-hmm. So if they make too much meat, they weigh it after and they get in trouble. So knowing that, let's say they made an extra back, batch of chicken because they're low on chicken and nobody ended up taking the chicken. They'll be like, oh, do you want more chicken? Like, really? you take all the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so before money. closing, I think they close at 10 or 11. Got to go in and get your get your money's worth. I'm about to do that. Yeah. Get, get, me, get me right for lunch the next day. Exactly. Yeah. That's you make multiple saying. meals, setting yourself up for success. Like you talked about earlier with your friends, you know, you got to choose the right Chipotle workers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I'm trying to choose you. If you're out there, hit me up. <laughs> Hit my man up. Man. But yeah, I mean, going back to being healthy with what you're eating, when did you start taking emphasis on oh. like eating healthy and all the other aspects that come into like being a successful football player? I think when you know, when CSU got our nutritionist, Pamela Bartz. Pam, shout out to um, Pam. Shout out to Pam. Is she still at CSU? No, she is at Mississippi State. Whoa. And she left last She's gone. <laughs> but... <laughs> But she, but to have access to a nutritionist, um, you know, like that was was monumental. It really was monumental, monumental in the context. Um, you know, because I, I, I was just in her ear all the time, like, what is this? What is this? What should I do here? What should I do here? And then they started doing like the points based system. You know, if you sent a picture of your meal, oh yeah, you know, to the coaches, then you would get extra points, and then you know all that college stuff. Um, and so there I am making, trying to make healthy meals at night. And um, then I started seeing them, you know, I started feeling better. And I was like, you know what, I could, I could probably do this, you know. And then now it's kind of just like a habit, you know, where I, like, I don't really, I don't eat fried food. I don't eat really greasy food. I try and stay away from, you know, certain, certain things. Um, and obviously there's sometimes where it's like, that's all I got. Or it's a cheat day or, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, but I, I, just feel, I just feel good about myself when I eat healthy. That's important. But the problem with that is it's expensive and it is hard to come by, you know, and it takes time to prep it. And there's not very many restaurants that sell super healthy food. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's why I'm stuck eating Chipotle all the time. That's true. You know? I mean, it's yeah. fairly healthy, I think. <laughs> it is. But I think it's so cool how in like the cooking industry, even if you buy healthy food, you can be so creative with it. It's like a creative industry. It's like an art kind of. Yeah. Like I love cooking. Like if I'm bored, I'll go yeah. cook like whatever. You know what I'm saying? I remember, yeah. I remember, like when we did have that point system at CSU. You'd be on that fucking slideshow every time. Yeah. And you'd be like, 
Zach made these new like tacos with yeah <laughs> some type of I'd be microwaving something. Pam would come over. She'd be like, "Oh, what is that?" And I'm like, "It's beets and chicken, and Dude, broccoli and rice." Like, get at me. Pam <laughs> would get hype when you made yourself a good meal. Yeah. She'd be like, "She was the most energetic nutritionist I've ever met." And yeah. she was awesome. Shout out Pam. Yeah, shout Part out to two. Pam. Shout out to Pam. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, be eating food and uh, just like the way you feel, like you said, when you do eat good and you're living good, mm-hmm. is like super big in your life because. I've started to realize that like later down the road, unlike you, like when I was earlier, like fresh out of high school, like I would party a lot, dude. And it was bad. And the main reason why is because of my brother. He was, um, he looks just like me three years older than me. So like Uh I had his ID since I was like 18 (laughs) and like, I was like, I wasn't like that irresponsible. Here's my thing is like, I was always like how to work hard, play hard mentality. right? Right. So it got me in trouble a lot. Like, I would work super hard all the time, um, but I just needed to ditch that play hard mentality, you know? But back then, I was young, didn't have that mentality, and I had my brother's ID, so I was going out, drinking all the time, and, like, I didn't think think secondly of it. But, like, as I've gotten older, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier, how, like, trial and error, most people, it takes them a while to learn that mentality. Mm -hmm. So I think in the later, like, two, last two years of my life, like, I think I've started to realize that, like, it's not worth it, like... Mm -hmm the way it makes you feel the way like the after effects of drinking the after effects of eating bad like it has a big effect on you like moving forward and now like i i think it comes down to like what you value right Mm -hmm. so like i value now being healthy i value how i feel more than i valued what i valued back then what i valued back then was just like having fun letting loose being wild or whatever whatever it may be but then as you mature it's like where are your values now where you put where do you put your values in place yeah man that's it's kind of crazy how you have to like you know just experience more and you know grow older to kind of see those things man i don't know maybe it was just me just not like you know going to parties and it's like i'm gonna be the tallest person there and everyone's gonna <laughs> stare at me so i'm not gonna go but yeah. also i feel like a lot of times you know i'd go out and next you know you're just kind of like talking to the people that you went with you're just like standing there yeah you know i'm like i can do this anywhere you really know? And can then, and then you get to like your third party and you're like well i was just doing this like it's the same thing I was doing last week. Like, what's what's yeah. the difference, you know? I mean, some nights they're different than others, you know, but I feel like, you know, if you kind of go to one party, you go to them all, you know? I mean, there's yeah. some people that love that lifestyle. Maybe it's just not me, you know? No, yeah, and I think a big part of it for you, I mean, that could be wrong, is just, like, how your parents raised you, your mom raised you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? If, she, if you didn't have guidance from her or – or whoever else was in your life that was, like, in your ear about th- these type of things, mm-hmm. then – you wouldn't have known any better, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm a big believer in, like, you're, obviously your parents raise you, but the city that you are you grew up in also raises you as well. Yeah. So, like, when I was younger, like, I love my parents. They, like, provided for me in a sense, but they didn't really, like, they weren't too attuned to giving me advice about life. Like, I was more how to figure everything out on my own, which is why a lot of it was trial and error. And I feel like a lot of people out there even listening, it's trial and error for them, too. You know what I mean? So having those good parents like you had or your mom is like really good for you and led you down the right path. So shout out to moms, man. Yeah. Shout out to the parents. Shout out to the parents. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that I, th- I truly believe that, you know, it's, it's the house that raises you. Too, and then it's also the people, you know, outside the house, you know, so people in your, your friends, you know, friends, teachers, um, teammates, you know, people you just like come across, um, you know, cause not only did, you know, my parents, they, you know, they played their role. You know, but they, you know, I don't think that they completely made me who I am because, you know, I mean, they had a significant portion. Yeah. You know, but also it's like, you know, sports and who I was around in sports played a, a big factor. And my parents didn't play sports, um, you know, so there was kind of like, like a detachment there, you know. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, going back to the coaches, you know, it's like, well, then there's parental figures that share a common interest. Yeah. And then you listen to things that they say. Um, and then, you know, you meet these older athletes and, um, you know, you, you, you have relations with teachers and, um, you know, teachers always have great advice for the most part. And, um, man, big credit to everyone, Mm -hmm. you know, who is a part of my life that made me who I am and kind of dropped, um, you know, advice, you know, whenever, 
you know, that I really, you know, listen to. Yeah. You know? I then, mean, everybody, you know, everybody that you come across in life has some part of value to give to you and knowledge to give you. Right. Exactly. That's why I love doing these podcasts because everybody that's, that's my guest is like, they're spreading positivity like you, right. The mm-hmm. community and your craft, and they all have gems to share. Like yeah. everybody that you come across is going to have something to teach you, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And know? I think that's, that's big because, you know, everyone has a different life and everybody experiences different things. You know, there's things that you've experienced that I haven't experienced. There's things that I've experienced that you haven't. And so then you bring in new perspectives. And the more perspectives that you can look through, you know, the more of a complete understanding of the world you live in you'll have, I think. No. You know? So, I mean, <clears throat> I think, you know, just trying try to build a, a bigger perspective, a bigger lens, you know. Yeah. So. I agree. No, I definitely agree with that. So now you're in uh, Kansas City, right? Mm-hmm. How are you liking Kansas City? Kansas City is, is cool. It's a lot more than what I expected. What do you mean? Um, I thought it was a little, you know, a smaller city. I didn't think that there was that much going on because um, I never really go out east. You know, I'm always going out west. And uh, Kansas City, it seems like there's a lot going on out there, and the barbecue is insane. <laughs> I've seen, like, Dude, yeah, you told me the barbecue is crazy. The barbecue <laughs> is ridiculous. Like I've never had barbecue as good as a barbecue I've had in Kansas city. Wow. It was And so I went there, I played the chiefs twice last year with San Francisco and the Cardinals. And so after the game, they gave us Gates barbecue and Gates barbecue is kind of like their staple. Is that like um, a local Kansas city barbecue place? Yeah. So I can't, how does that work in the league and NFL? Do they give you post meal like meals just like they would in college? Yeah. Yeah. So that, okay. that works the same. Um, and so they gave us this Gates barbecue and I was like, man, this is insane. Like I took, you know, some of their sauce back home <sighs> and, uh, and then I finally get out there and I, I'm talking to people and I'm like, what's, what's the best, what's the best barbecue out here? You know, I want to give, you know, give me, uh, you know, your favorites and they name off everything but Gates <laughs> what? basically. And they're like, yeah, Gates is, you know, it, it's really, you it's know, it's average. good it's a staple, but it's really not the, you know, if you're looking for like the best barbecue, it's not going to be at Gates. But shout out to Gates. It's pretty good. Um, did you experience better places? I did. So they gave me three places. Everyone gave me Jack Stack, Q39, and Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. And those places, whoa. I mean, every, they, do they blow Gates out of the water? You know, I really can't talk too much about Gates because I never went into Gates. Oh, you just had that meal. I had it after the game, though. Okay. You probably... Um, there's other stuff that comes into play, too. You're probably hungry. You're like, this yeah. is the best meal I've ever had. And you're just so starving. maybe Exactly. Yeah, so that probably could have played a big factor, too. And maybe if I went into Gates, it probably would have been a little bit better. A little fresher. Um, but, man, those places out there were insane. Like, Jack Sack has the best baked beans I've ever had in my entire life. You know... Uh, it's a big cute, statement, sir. Dude... These beans are in. I don't know. Do you watch a uh, Dave, Dave Portnoy? He does those pizza reviews. Uh, I've seen. I've seen a couple. Of he says. He reviews. says you can't say that because if you say it's the big best baked beans you'll ever have, what if you have better baked beans? That's true. Moving forward, what are you going to so say about as those of right beans? now? As of right now, that's the best I've had. Okay. Q39 has amazing ribs, and and Joe's Kansas City had the really really good like burnt ends. And then I tried to go to a place out here and it was still good, but it just wasn't, it wasn't really touching. Yeah. Um, wasn't touching Kansas city's barbecue. So, I mean, whatever you hear about Kansas city barbecue, that's what it really is. Like it's, it's worth the hype. It is is a real deal out there. Okay. I'm going to come visit you, bro. I'm going to have to make a trip down there. Come on out. I don't know whether I will never have another reason to visit Kansas city, but you be out there. (laughs) I don't think, like, I don't know what else is out there. The barbecue. I mean, they had they had a couple of things in the city that I went and saw, but the barbecue is basically basically like their main, from what my perspective, it seemed okay. like it was like their main attraction. Everyone's like, oh, you got you got to try the barbecue. No one's like, yeah, go check out Union Station downtown or yeah. go do this. Everyone's like, go get some barbecue. Yeah, and I'm I'm about it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong I'm about man. it. We value our barbecue. Yeah, I'm fucking, I'm fucking sweating my ass off. Yeah, but I mean, over the past year. You just go ahead and button up and button in one more, bro. I'm going to have to for the people. We were going to wait until we got to the wedding to do this, but. You guys sneak peek. We, yeah, we got we to gotta <laughs> make that happen now. But, yeah, in the past year, you've had a crazy year as far as just adjustments to make. Man. You've, how many states have you lived in in the past year? Like California, Arizona. So California, the Chargers. Yeah, so start off with the Chargers. Um 
released at, released after training camp, and then I went to San Francisco practice squad for six weeks, and then got released there, and then went to Indianapolis for three weeks, and then um, and then the Cardinals picked me off their practice squad to their active roster for the last eight weeks of the season, um, and then going into this you know this off season, they the Cardinals cut me right before rookie mini camp. Chiefs claimed me off waivers, and I was in Kansas City for a month. So, I mean, I'm kind of seeing a little bit of everything. So you live in, like, five states, basically <clears throat> six states? So California, Arizona, Indiana, Missouri. Colorado. Colorado, yeah. Yeah, like five different states. Making my rounds, man. <laughs> I should be getting these rapid rewards. <laughs> you really should I know, build those I'm rewards not. up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, son. But it's, it's cool, though. I mean... Uh, yeah, it sucks to be like moved around, but you know I still have skin in the game, um, yeah. and you know to be able to travel and see different you know parts of the country and meet different people, um, you know it's kind of like it it's made me grow grow a lot as a player as far as like my understanding of you know what the business is and being around different players to see how they work and how they operate and um, that part has been really cool you know and then the constant learning. You know, because everywhere I go, I have to learn the playbook. Yeah. You know, so it's like as soon as I get a, a good grip on the playbook, I'm boom, I'm gone. I didn't. I keep forgetting about that. You know? That you got to learn that playbook. That's insane. And then you got to learn another one. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 all kind of like the same thing. You know, yeah. But it's the, the, the terminology, a slight difference here and there. Um, you know, so I was I was, it was almost, it's kind of fortunate, you know, that I had a constant, you know, uh, period of just learning. You know, which which was really cool. Yeah. So I wasn't, you know, I didn't learn offense and then kind of like, you know, uh, get comfortable with that. And so then I'd keep learning, you know, different schemes, different terminology. And so now I move to a new place and I'm like, okay, I've heard, I've basically heard it all. You know, yeah. like, what do you guys call this? That's a really um, unique experience that you've had. Not many rookies have bounced around like, right? I mean, is that, it's not normal for a rookie to bounce around to like four or five different teams in one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have. I've met a few people that have, but not too many. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, not many do it, but I mean, there's. Someone was telling me that there was a dude. There was a guy who just finished. He might have been like his third or fourth year, and he had been with like thirteen, thirteen teams. What? Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it's it's all know, about yeah. it's, it's all about. I guess your attitude towards the situation, right? Yeah. You could be like, what was me? Like, oh, I got, I, I keep, I keep getting bounced around here and there and like, yeah. look at the cup half empty, but then you could look at it like you're looking at it and look at it like, oh, this is an experience that I, that I have that no one else can have. Yeah. And so that was like one of the things that kind of kept me going, you know, it's like you get released or I, I get released in, uh, in San Francisco and I'm like, man, like this sucks, you know, like yeah. why I'm have to, why do I have to move, you know? you know a few thousand a couple thousand miles away you know is it is it worth it and then it's like you get there and you realize that it's not that bad you know it's like the same everywhere and then you know you realize the bigger picture you know it's like well you know why why would i give up now if i've been working you know my entire college career for this and why did i go to you know otas why did i do training camp you know why you know because i'm vaunting it's like i'm i don't have to play football if i don't want to yeah you know so you know, just understanding how how much I've worked for it, you know, so I'm not going to let it up. Yeah. Uh, just because someone, you know, because of, of a numbers game. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And just going with the blows, right? I mean, you're just going to keep working hard and doing what you're doing, keeping your head down, and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Basically. But controlling the controllables, right? Exactly. And that's, <clears throat> and that's another quote I always, always carry with me is a, you know, you control what you can control and a lot of stuff that happens is out of out of my control yeah. you know um you know but you just kind of you understand that and you just you do with what you can yeah do you ever think about that like take a step back and be like how unique of a life experience you're having right now just like being where you're at sometimes um especially when i, I try to I, I just tell people like yeah like you know, I think it really, it really, really hit me when I was in San Francisco, and it was my last game there. We went up to Green Bay, and we're playing Monday Night Football, and I'm like, not only am I in Lambeau right now, but you know, I got, I basically have a sideline pass. 
you know, yeah. to watch this game, um, you know, and, and potentially playing it. Or, or no, I didn't dress that game. I was practice squad. Yeah. Um, but it's like I'm there, and I'm like, how many people get a chance to do this? You know, yeah. and it, it's stuff like that that you know kind of make me sit back and and realize how how fortunate I am, yeah, and how unique it is. Um, but I think there's a lot of stuff that goes on too that people don't see, um, you know, that might make me question if other people would do it. You know, when they're like, oh, like if I had your size and if I had this, yeah. I could do this. I'm like, Ugh. there's a lot more that goes to it. There's some, I mean, a lot of big people out here yeah. that are your size. It's <laughs> like, you know it too. Like in college, it's like, you know, you're, you're up early, you know, you're having to do all these different things that other people don't have to do. Like on your days off, you know, you might have to go do a little cardio or you might have to go do something, you know, yeah. where other people are just, you know, they're kind of doing whatever they want to do or what they need to do. And you're doing other things. And then on top of that, you have to do everything else. Yeah. You it's know? a lot that goes into it that people don't lot. even see behind yeah. the scenes. People just see the glitz and glam. But, I mean, I think I think you're, you're going to really, like, realize it, like, after it's all done. Yeah. When you look back on it and be like, that was fucking sick. <laughs> 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 that was cool yeah. as hell. Like, I got to be able to do something like that. Literally, like, you're in the point zero zero one percent like, of people that get to do what you're doing. Man. And it's hard to realize when you're in it. But it's just so like cool. anything else in life, like, you experience it, and then after you look back at it. Like, for example, the Jamaica trip we took, right? Yeah. Like, we are just having fun in the moment. Mm -hmm. We went to Jamaica, had a fucking dope time, and then That's we look, super cool. look back, and it's just like, oh, like, now we have those memories yeah. to look back on, and they're, like, always cool. Man, that was the best trip, too. Really was. That was so much fun. Yeah. I wish we could talk to the people about, you know, how that was, which it would take probably another two hours. For what? Oh, just, to talk just, about just, just, to talk about just about the Jamaica stuff. trip. Yeah. yeah. That was so much fun. Like the connections that we had with people, um, you know, with the people that we went with. Um, yeah. just, a, just a quick disclaimer out there for you guys listening. Um, our college at Colorado State uh, started this inaugural program when we started it. It was... Uh, kind of like a study abroad program because student athletes don't really get the chance to um, take study abroad trips because of their like busy schedules or always in season they always got workouts so shout out to dr bimper yeah. who is the goat at csu he uh, set this up for us um he, he him realizing that fact that student athletes don't really get to experience that he found like a gap between um the summertime where like everybody had like kind of like a dead period and he picked that time and uh, CSU picked two or 12 student athletes, right? It was 12 of us? I think it was 14. 14? I don't know. It was something. Yeah, 12 to 14. 14. 12, yeah, somewhere around there. Um, 12 people to go on this like st service abroad trip to uh, Jamaica. And it was all expenses paid. And yeah, I, re I remember I was talking to the, our student athletic uh, counselor, like Carrie. And she's just like, you should really apply for this, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, well, tell me more about it. I didn't really, because you see flyers up on the walls, yeah. like, but it's just like kind of subliminal. Like you don't, like, oh, it's just another thing going on. And she's just like, yeah, like it's all expensive to pay. And she, I was like, what? That's like, what that's what caught you right about it? <laughs> well, yeah, because I was like, I can't afford something like this. Like back then I wasn't on scholarship or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So like I couldn't afford to take like a study bot trip. I didn't, and she's like, it's all expense paid. And I was just like, what? She's like, yeah, like we're having trouble, like, getting people to apply and i was like why would you not want to go on this trip That's like where do i sign up i signed up that day and then we got selected and yeah i mean it was an easy selection too yeah they were super easy selection man yeah and they, they they've had these trips too and this year they went to costa rica yeah that's cool um and i would talk to the younger guys i'm like man you should really do this trip and like oh no like i want to go see my family and yeah everybody want to have my time off and i'm like like, yeah, I know, I realize that family time is really important, but, you know, when opportunities come that are, like, once in a lifetime like this, you know, like an all-expense paid trip, you know, where you can get out of the country, um, learn something, you know, for free, and while you have time available, that, like, why not do that? Yeah. You know, why not take the, why not, you know, take that jump and, and just do it, you know? Yeah. I had a, I had a super similar, like, mentality. That's exactly how I thought really? about it. Why would you not want to do this? Is a, and then the thing is, like I understand kind of where other student athletes are coming from because the way they look at it is, 
I only get these two weeks for the yeah. whole year to be able to visit my family and to come home and have fun with my friends. And I think it goes back again to what I said earlier. It's all about what you value. What do you value? Like having fun with your friends back home or do you see the bigger picture and having right. this like once in a lifetime experience? And man, I remember for me, it was, it was tough because I wanted to have the two weeks, you know, with family to kind of do whatever I wanted. And then I was also worried about going out there and like losing weight That's and like right. missing out on training and, uh, those juicy patties, bro. Yeah, man. Shout out to our host mother, Mama Staples. Yeah, for feeding us, and um, you know those were that man. She she whipped it up. She really I did. I think I ended up gaining like a pound when I was out there. Surprisingly, the Jamaica food is super starchy and heavy. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you did not have a problem. It's like, like rice and beans and and boiled dumplings. Yeah, like boiled dumplings. And that was it. I but mean, I think the yeah. yeah, I think the biggest like thing to take away from them was just like how they live their life just like with li- the little that they had yeah. i read that really less left the in- lasting impact on me yeah just, like just how happy they were and like what they were able to do with the li- very little amount that they had you know i think that when you travel the world and you see things from again it's about broadening your perspective so you see you see their perspective and then you think back to your perspective of the world that you live in and then compared to the world that they're in you know and you kind of take things um a little bit slower and you're like okay well you know like 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 the shower at the house yeah the you know, it was just a pvc pipe coming out of the wall literally out of the wall and yeah. the way the water the water that they use was they have this big ass barrel like huge barrel yeah. and capture the rain water and they use that to like as a water source for like washing their hands in the faucet or taking a shower and they didn't have warm water so next year we're taking freezing cold cold showers and you know you appreciate you know warm showers again you appreciate you know, being able to drink water out of the sink. Yeah. You know, you appreciate air conditioning. You appreciate, you know, safety and security. Walking around, you appreciate street lights. You know, you appreciate like those things that we have here. You know, because we were able to live without that. You know, for ten days. Yep. And, um, I mean, it's a short enough time where you 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 feel the impact of not having those things, but then you know, it's also uh, definitely just forgot what I was saying. <laughs> But you know, you get what I'm saying, yeah. though. Yeah. No, no, I do. Yeah. Also, to you appreciate not getting bit by like 20 bugs a night, dude. <laughs> I was lathered up with with a uh, oil sp- bug spray. Bug spray. All, right I before shower, bed, just, dude. Right after shower, shower just, <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> that was nuts. Yeah, I never that experienced was not fun. that. Yeah, that part wasn't fun. But I mean, the thing is, like, you look back on it. Like you might remember the bugs because I just said it, but yeah. like you like don't remember like necessarily the bad parts, like the hard parts. You might yeah. remember like the good parts that you took away, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And then I realized that I really like coconut water. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the co- I like uh, water too. Yeah, I'm not even gonna say it, but you know, oh, you really yeah. yeah. You just learn some things, you know. <laughs> yeah, you learn a lot of things. It's the man of the myth and the legend right here. Yeah, they they branded me out there. I got nicknamed <laughs> the Cocoa Bread Man. If you don't know what Cocoa Bread Man is, you got to, I can't tell you, you got to go figure it out and go yeah, to go, Jamaica. Go to Jamaica. And hit me up and let me know what you, <laughs> what you find out. <laughs> they made the Cocoa Bread Man, the huh? The Cocoa Bread Man. Yeah, I'm a oh legend. I would, I'd be down to go back, honestly. Dude, so, um, man, I, I tell people all the time, they're like, I'm going to Jamaica. I'm like, oh, sweet, like. Jamaica is dope. Like, if you know, if you want, you know, someone to drive you around. Like, I know people out there. Like, this is where you should go. Make sure you try this at the restaurants. Man, I would definitely go back in a heartbeat yeah. if I have time. If you have time, it's yeah, a time yeah, thing, yeah. man. It's just, Stuff settles back down. Exactly. A little I'm, bit more. I'll, I'll make my way out there again sometime. Rick's Cafe. You know, oh, yeah. do some cliff jumping again. You know, like all, yeah. all that good, all that good jazz. Yeah, there's a lot to that they have to offer out there. Where have you been outside the country? Um, I've been to Mexico uh, a couple years ago. I went to Rosarito, and then I went uh, like a couple months ago. I went to Spain. I went to uh, Ibiza. I went to Madrid, and then I went to Barcelona, Ooh. which is a cool experience. But what I would not recommend is I did those three places in a span of like five days. So mm-hmm. like half my trip, I was on an airplane, but I got a really cheap rate for doing those. Still a really cool time, but. Yeah, like you want to spend a few days at least in like each place to see what they have to offer. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, it was it was a cool experience. Everyone speaks Spanish, so I was 
kind of like, <laughs> just lost okay. just lost yeah but the food is not good it's not good it's not good and Don't tell in me the that parts idea. that i went to they have paella you know what paella is no it's it's like this uh so a fish food is like seafood is is like uh what they're known for i guess so okay. like you get a, a, a like a salmon or something or like a, a good seafood and it's going to be good mm-hmm. but paella is basically like this rice and beans and like shrimp and like different type of uh different type of fish inside of it it's that's the only good thing that i had that was there and maybe like i just didn't go to the right places okay but the paella has like oyster shells sticking out of it it has Mm -hmm. chicken bone it has like bones in it so it's like you it's good but every bite you take you can't even like enjoy it because you have to worry about taking a bone out of your mouth i kind of like to worry about taking like a you like that well because you know in jamaica that's how they had like all the bones were still in the chicken that's how you know that shit is og it's like it's real (laughs) and i don't i think the bones kind of give it give it some flavor i guess it gives them some good authenticity right yeah i like that a lot have you have you been anywhere else besides Jamaica? No, Jamaica was the first place I went out of the country. That was the first place I went to. And it kind of gave me the travel bug. Like I want to go out, I want to get out. Um, but it's kind of scary now because you know you're not growing with like a group of people anymore. I mean, you can, but yeah, you know, it was like well organized and that kind of stuff. And it was just know, taking care for you. Yeah, it's like all I had to do was just get on a plane, <laughs> you know, and, it, and the rest was the rest was cake. Itinerary, I guess. Yeah. Well, if you ever want to travel, I'm down. We go wherever. And we can go back to Jamaica. We, can I mean, go we back. keep talking about it. Like every, it was like every other month in the group chat, someone was like, oh, we got to go back to Jamaica. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. And <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to plan it, dude. And <laughs> everyone's just like kind of caught up in their own life. And yeah, I get it. You know, you grow up, you can get jobs and you start doing stuff. And next thing you have to request days off. And yeah. I'm over here like gone for, you know, months at a time. And. It's hard finding a Man. schedule that works around yeah. with everybody. I always forget about that. Like I'll have like big gaps off like during the off season, and it'll be like Tuesday, and I'll hit them, you know, hit them, hit up somebody. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Like, I'm at work, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> like my bad. I forgot. <laughs> like I forgot that we're not in high school anymore. Yeah. Like you got a job. Like you don't get off till six or five. Yep. It's I'm, different. Man. It's a different dynamic. Yeah, and that's what be throwing me off. Every, yeah, like you said, everybody's doing their own thing. Do you do you experience that like with high school? Like if your high school friends are they usually like, like kind of doing their own thing now, and it's harder harder to hang out with them than it used to be. Kind of, um, you know, it's weird because I've kind of lost contact with a lot of a lot of my high school friends. Um, you know, because they're just kind of busy doing whatever they're doing. Um, you know, I mean, I I keep in contact with like some, but you know, I mean. For, the, for those friends who haven't made an effort to, like, I guess, contact me, you know, I haven't really yeah, uh, made an effort to contact them, you know, so, I mean, it's kind of uh, both ways, but... It's a two-way street. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of my friends didn't really go on to college. I mean, there was, there was several of them, but not a lot, so, I mean, that disconnect right there, right after high school was a big gap. And, you know, in college, you get really busy, yep. and you just kind of just get caught up in things, and it's hard to kind of keep in contact with you know 20 dudes 20 30 dudes yeah um you meet so many different people too exactly you know and so i think just kind of getting caught up in you know college athletics and then you know after college it's tough but i mean i have my core core group of friends from high school that i still keep in contact with and they get caught up in their days and those are the people i'm always texting like hey man like what are you doing like i got work at two o'clock and i'm like dude like (laughs) Just hit me up when you get off. Like, <laughs> when's your next day off? And then they're like, my next day off is Friday. And I'm like, I got work. I got stuff on Friday, you know? So I, I, that stuff I never really thought about. Yeah, it's hard you know? now. The thing I think, though, is just, like, as you get older, like, when, to middle age, like, 40s and 50s, you notice, like, for me, like, my parents, my aunts and uncles, they have less and less and less and less friends the older they mm-hmm. get, right? Which is sad to see. But I think in our generation, I think it's going to be a lot different just because... They never had like social media. They never had like the ways that we have of contacting mm-hmm. each other. So it's like a lot of the people that I might not still keep in touch with, like I still like know about their lives. It's really weird. Like right. from high school, like from my class, I know what you're doing. Like I know exactly how your life is doing. We have we might, we might, we might may not have talked in like two or three years, but mm-hmm. I know exactly what your life is because of social media. And that stuff is weird because then when you have conversations with them and you haven't talked to them in like a year or two, it's almost as if you can just pick up from where you left off, you know, because you just kind of, you just kind of like know things. Yeah, you're, dude, it's like, how's a, 
how's living in like North Dakota? And it's like, you have friends in North Dakota? No, no, oh. that's just an example. <laughs> uh, but it's just like, how's, how's, uh, whatever, like, and you know this about them without them even telling you. It's kind of yeah. weird, but yeah, social media is, is a weird, weird realm. I mean, it's, it's, it's growing so fast. I'm not, definitely not an expert on it, and I'm not very transparent, you know, when it comes to social media. Yeah. Um, you know, people are always like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on about you because you don't post very much. And, you know, I, I like I like the sense of privacy. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I don't need to post every time I'm going out and to the grocery store. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't need to post every time, you know, like, I, I, just, I just don't feel the need to do that. Yeah. Um, maybe it's cause my mom is really bad about that. And so maybe I'm off of social media cause she's on social media so much, uh, but <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> I'm like, I just don't, you know, like you're just going to post everything anyway, you know, so yeah. might as well not even do that. Um, and also there was a movie, I forget what it's called. What is it called? Dot or uh, the, the red circle, the red circle. I never saw so it. It's this movie. Um, it's kind of like a social media based thing where these people want to go transparent and next thing you know, they're, they, they sign a contract and everyone knows everything about them. It's a, it's a trippy movie and it's kind of hard to explain, but basically after I saw that movie, I was like, I don't even want to be on social media anymore. Really? What's it called? I think it's called the red circle. Okay. And so, you know, these people, they, they, you know, they agree to become completely transparent. So everyone around the world can watch, watch them, you know, while they sleep, while they eat, while they work out, while they do daily activities every single day for the rest of their lives. And they lose their, 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 their privacy. And they start to go crazy. I think from what I remember, um, but sounds it, like an episode of black mirror, something like that. It was just, I was like, man, like where, where, where do you draw the line? You know, of like where, what you want people to know and what you want people to not know. Yeah. You know, it's like I try and use it as a way to advertise myself and, you know, I guess keep people updated on major changes, you know. But other than that, I mean, I feel like people are just way too transparent. I'm like, I don't really need, like, I don't really want to know that about you. you yeah. Know? Like, and then it loses a sense of conversation because then you lose, if you know everything about them, you know, you lose a call. That's and, true. You know, you're like, well, hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, I just had a kid. And you're like, whoa, that's crazy. I didn't know that. But if you're on, if you're posting about that stuff. That's true. I never thought but about that. It makes sense with the kid, though. That's, that's like pretty big news. But just like small conversations. Like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, or like, oh, I saw that on social media. So I don't really need to ask you about that. Yeah. It's just going to be like, you have nothing to like really talk about with you, yeah. if you posting everything that you do. Yeah. Like I'll get phone calls from people like, oh, so. Uh, you know, how's Arizona? And I'm like, oh, I'm not in Arizona anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm in Kansas City, <laughs> you know. Kansas. And, uh, you know, it just starts a whole new conversation because it's something they just didn't know. You know, instead yeah. of just calling and say, hey, how's it going? How's the weather? Oh, the weather's great. And it's hot out here. And that's it. You know, it just gives body to the conversation. No, that makes sense, definitely, too. Did you get some gas, man? Huh? You get I some gas? these burps coming up. Like, keep you remember when you tried to shotgun that, that, that a tall boy? Oh God! In your garage or Sarah's yeah. garage? Yeah. yeah, it was like <laughs> half of the beer fell out. But that, that was rough. <laughs> it was pretty rough. <laughs> that was the first time I ever tried to talk how to shotgun a tall boy before. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of beer. I <laughs> never, I never felt my stomach like so expanded in my entire life. Yeah, I will never ever do. Well, that for again. me, it was like <laughs> you guys were there for a while. I don't know why I came late, but I was doing something, and I was like, "Oh, I'm coming out," and you're like, "You got to catch up." Catch up. Yeah, probably a podcast. No, I wasn't podcasting back. Podcasting then. with yourself, <laughs> talking to yourself in the mirror, maybe. <laughs> talking to myself in the mirror, maybe. I could have been practicing for this. I know, right? I don't know. But yeah, you're like, you got to catch up. And then you just like gave me shotgun like five beers in a row or something like yeah, that. I mean, it's the name of the game, I guess. You know, that was like the one time I partied in my entire life, you know? That is true. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when you do it more rarely, it makes it more fun when you do it, right? I guess so. <laughs> Shoot. You don't think so? Hmm. You don't think so? What? Like, if you do something oh. less, like, it makes it more special. Like, for example, like, let's say you only went out once a year. Mm. Like, that one time you went out would be, like, fun as hell. Oh, yeah. You know absolutely. What I mean? You know, it's like, this beer right now tastes amazing. 
because I don't I don't drink beer very often. Yeah, you know. So it's like whenever I do, I'm like, wow, like maybe I should do this again tomorrow. You know. But then I think to myself, I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe I should do this on again Monday. Tomorrow. I have I have training. You know. So do I want to feel this beer in me on Monday? No. But I'm enjoying this right now. <laughs> That's a great mentality to look at it. I guess so. I mean, it's because then I feel like you get to live more in the moment when you do things less often. But, you know, I don't know. That really didn't make too much sense. But it makes sense to me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe two of you are right there. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I had, there's one more thing that I wanted to touch on. We got to get out of here pretty soon. But that, uh, that experience you had, um, when was it like 2013 or 2013 or 12 or 13 with the aurora oh 2012 2012 yeah with the aurora shooting right um there's probably a lot of people out there that might not be familiar with it just because like a lot of my listeners are from like california Uh uh-huh so what was that experience like as far as just like what happened like you basically if you don't know out there like there was a shooting at the aurora movie theaters for batman right right premiere of batman Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, Zach was at the theaters that day and just talk about like what, what happened that day. Um, man, you. you're trying to end with the juicy stuff, huh? <laughs> man, we well, I wanted to talk about it, but we, yeah, we, no. were, we got talking about all the types no, of you're shit. Good. Um, yeah. So, you know, July 20th, 2012, you know, a uh, gunman opened in the theater and he killed, he killed 12, um, and then injured I think it was a 70 injured or something. Um, mm-hmm. The numbers kind of blurred because it's been a while. <coughs> but, you know, it, it was it was a wild experience because, you know, I wasn't in the same theater as everything was happening. I was in the one next door, but a bullet came through the wall and hit me. It's crazy. Um, you know, and it, 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 it was shocking because, you know, for one, you didn't really know what was happening because you don't see anything in my theater. And then, you know, I exit the theater and I'm just bleeding you know i'm basically pouring blood and then you kind of see other people running and you know the flight or flight mode the fight or flight kicks in uh, at that sorry to cut you off but at that point were you like really like like did you like black out kind of like in a sense where it was just like like you started bleeding right and you're just like what what's going on like you didn't really realize what was going on at that time yeah so i mean i thought i thought people were throwing firecrackers um, I thought people were throwing firecrackers and I thought I had one head like exploded right behind my ear. Um, and next thing you know, I see an enormous amount of blood coming from me. And I'm at that time because no one else in the theater was freaking out, you know, so I was, I wasn't freaking out myself more than I was worried about how bad I was injured. Yeah. And, um, and I was just trying to see, you know, so there was somebody who can help me stop the bleeding and just kind of tell me how bad it is whether i need to go home because you, you can't know, see to, it right like, no yeah because yeah, it hit me you know right below this earlobe and it came out in the back for the viewers um you know whether I, I need to go home you know so my mom can take care of this or if i need to go to the hospital you know yeah. um and with the amount of blood that was coming out it, i'm pretty sure i need to go to the hospital but it's, i'd still like to know you know what's happening <clears throat> and then you know you run out and you see other people in the other theater running out and you know, there's nothing, there's nothing to fight because the lobby's empty and people are running out. So flight mode kicks in. You know, you take off running, and I find help, um, like around the corner from some road workers, and then get, um, you know, I get driven to the hospital in a squad car because I was away from the scene of everything, and then just the chaos at the hospital. Um, you know, just people getting rushed in, and you know, uh, it was like some real like TV, you know, ER type stuff. Yeah, um, that 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 was wild. Just seeing all that happen, yeah. and being and experiencing something like that, life changing, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think um, it could go, you know, for everyone who's had a near death experience not not just you know uh, you know being a part of a mass shooting, but you know when you, when you when you look death in the face, you know it, it kind of changes you because it changes the way you look at the world you're in. It makes you look at the people who are in your lives. It makes you look at, um, you know, like it makes you look at yourself a little bit deeper. Um, you know, you don't take things for granted. You kind of, you just see things in a different light, you know? So um, do you, do you think that you take away that as a positive from that experience? 
I think I take away as much positivity as I can. Um, you know, I think it really benefited me that I didn't see everything that happened in theater nine. Um, and so that's why I'm able to talk about it easier. And, um, you know, it makes it an incredible story because that bullet was coming for me. And, yeah. and you know, I just happened to look over my right shoulder, Yeah. you know, when it was coming my way. Um, and so I think just kind of, I don't, I don't, I mean, it happened when I was 17 and, you know, it's, it's been a while and, you know, things, have, things have kind of changed in my life, but it hasn't really changed my perspective on what I've, I've learned from it. Um, you know, but controlling the controllables, you know, this happened to me, I accepted that it happened to me and now how can I share positivity and how can I, um, be an inspiration for people going through adversity? Um, you know, somebody who, you know, is a part of a mat, you know, was a part of a mass shooting or somebody, um, you know, who's dealing with a death or someone who's dealing with, you know, uh, you know, not getting accepted to grad school or, you know, anything that may affect someone's life. Yeah. You know, because I don't know, not too many people have experiences like me, not too many people have experiences like you, like there's things that you've gone through, you know, like going to JUCO to D1 to earn a scholarship. Yeah. You know, that not a lot of people have experienced stuff like that. Yeah, I so. agree. Yeah. Everybody has that thing about them that, like I said earlier, you can, you can provide value to somebody. Like you said, the shit that you've been through you can just by like talking about it, you can shed a lot of light to people out there who might realize like what Zach's been through. Maybe Mm -hmm. what I'm going through right now that I thought was the worst thing ever isn't as bad. Or even the fact that they can get through whatever, like you said, because like you said, like a lot, a lot of people survive like situations like that. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's like, I don't have the best advice and you know, it's, it's hard, you know, people like, well, well, you know, what, what advice do you have for people who are going through adversity? And I'm like, I, it's hard that it's hard to have advice because yeah. everyone's different. And I tell my story and people can take whatever they want from it, you know, and apply it in a way that they see fit. And so that's how I kind of take my story and, and use it for inspiration or use it for advice. Um, you know, I always tell people, you know, the way that I got through it was just, knowing that you know this it it happened and there's nothing i can do to change that so what am i going to do tomorrow to make sure that i continue to live my life the way you know it's supposed to be and that's happy loving and fun you know yeah um because every single morning the sun rises every single night the sun sets you know so that is it's gonna it's gonna continue you know so it's what, what you make it's what you make of your day in between, you know, the sunrise and the sunset, you know, that really kind of propels you, you know, past adverse situations and, uh, and stuff like that. So, I mean, that, that's, that's what I tell people, but like I said, people can kind of take away whatever they want, you know, from my story and yeah. people kind of, you know, I, I love know. it. Well, it's, it's obvious that you try to touch as many lives as possible because you're like super active in the community as well, right? Like you're always involved in some type of community activist event you're always doing something for the community and it's, it's just, just go back to you like wanting to spread that positivity yeah. or what is it? I try to, um, I mean, I, I try to as much as I can because I know you never know how, you know, you will impact somebody, you know, just like those college athletes that came in when I was in high school, didn't know that they impacted me, you know, to make the right decisions to get me where I'm at now. You never know, you know, how a smile walking past someone who's having a bad day will change their, will change their day. You don't know how, you know, these, these little different things can impact somebody. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's like an obligation as a member of the, of a community to go out and make it better. Um, especially, you know, having the status of a, having my status as an NFL athlete, you know, and, um, a survivor of something that's very relevant in society today. Yep. Um, you know, I can grab people's attention and they'll listen because, you know, I've been through that. Yeah. Um, and I have experiences that others don't. And I listen back, you know, to the, those people who, who talk to me as well. Um, you know, and so getting out of the community and doing these different types of events, um, uh, it makes me feel good about myself doing it. And, um, I'd like to think that, you know, I'm also t- impacting somebody the way that somebody impacted me you know, when I was little. Yeah. Um, and so 
yeah no no that's no. why i like to do that no definitely yeah it's i i'm kind of similar i i get i would used to get involved in a few uh community activist um organizations before i can move out to colorado like there's this thing called uh warm the hearts it was mm-hmm. this, something that my old middle school has done and i followed through with doing it even after like i left it and i was on my mater there mm-hmm. where like we give out clothes and toiletries and food to the homeless people on skid row which is like the number one most populated homeless place in like la right mm-hmm. and different things so like my church organization like it just makes you feel good not that you should be doing it solely for it to make you feel good like you right. should be doing it solely to like help other people right. but the fact that it makes you feel good like makes you keep on doing it and if yeah. it's helping you make a difference moving forward then that's just like an add-on like the cherry on top yeah i think that stuff is contagious and you know there is a lot of um like organizations like the food bank and stuff that depend on volunteers and they depend on people who are willing to give their time you know to to, to feed people you know so i mean um if you have the time, you might as well be productive with it because someone out there, it's, I mean, realistically, it's almost like they're depending on you. Facts. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I, I, I don't know everyone's stories, you know, but I'm, I'm sure there is someone out there who is trying their, their hardest to get, you know, stable and they're trying to get a normal life. But, um, you know, you playing video games all day really <laughs> isn't going to help them. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, I don't want to say it's selfish to play video games because then you probably worked hard to get to that point where you can't play video <laughs> games all day. But at the same time, you know, we only, we live on one earth and, you know, we're, we're people and, you know, the, the better we can do to help our neighbors, you know, the better I think that the community itself will, will do. Yeah, I agree. It's like about how many lives can you touch? And if that's something that you value, then like we obviously both highly suggest getting out in the community and yeah. doing something. And even if you've never done it before, just see how it feels. Yeah. Even if it's, even if it's just like one little thing, you know, it's like, I know <clears throat> like this past year I've been kind of, um, I haven't been out as much as I would like because it's like, I'm, I'm up on the playbook. Like I'm, I'm so busy doing these things that I need to do to get in a position where then I can go out back out in the community. Like in college, you know, it's like, I've, you know, like towards the back half, I was pretty comfortable with the playbook and, you know, like all these things where I was pretty comfortable um, with what I was doing, where I was able to go out, you yeah. know, and, and uh, sacrifice time, you know, for others. Because I I was like, well, what am I going to do with these? What am I going to do on this off day? You know, oh, there's Boys and Girls Club over here. Let's, you know, we'll go do that. Yeah. Um, so, but I think, I definitely think it's important to make sure that you take care of yourself you know, before you take care of others, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause I mean, I, you know, you have to, you have to take care of yourself first cause that's just the world we live in today. How can you help somebody else? If you can't exactly. Yourself? You know, yeah. so once you're, once you're good, you know, then it's like, okay, well think about, you know, more than just yourself. Yeah, I agree. You know, awesome. Well, I agree with all that you just said right now. And for the, those of you who don't know, Zach, you can find him, um, training camp with the, kansas city chiefs so best of luck with with you on that we could talk for hours and hours and hours but we got to get out of here so zach oh, appreciate do you doing this do we have to get out of here we have to get we out don't of have here. to I me mean, we don't have to it's our choice we can always do day. a part two what do you value this podcast or the wedding i bought <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah i gotta we gotta go to get that to that wedding so yeah well part part two is coming soon yeah um you know, so make some comments if you want a part two, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that how, that how yeah, make works? some comments. Let us know what you like, what you want to hear. Um, hit us both up if you have any questions about anything. We're more than happy to help you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, All thanks right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely.